Now that I've created the skeleton of this family, I can now start creating some 3D geometry. There are five principal ways of creating geometry within a Revit family. I'll go over them briefly now, but they will be covered in more detail in later videos. So geometry can be found in the Forms panel underneath the Create tab. The first tool is an extrusion, which creates a 3D solid by protruding a 2D shape. Note that if I hover over these tools, it gives me a preview as to how they work. A blend, which is a 3D shape that is formed from two profiles. A revolve, which is a 3D shape created by sweeping a profile around an axis. A sweep, which creates a shape by extruding a profile along a particular path and a swept blend, which is a combination of blend and sweep, which sweeps two profiles along a path. There are also void forms of each of these tools in order to create negative space. As part of this video, I will just be using the extrusion tool to create the tabletop and also the legs. So I will select on extrusion and note that many of the tools now become greyed out as I have entered into the sketch mode. I have a green tick and a cross in order to allow me to finish in the sketch mode or cancel it. In the draw panel I have a number of tools that allow me to draw the sketch that I wish to extrude. And I also have some additional work plane features here. So there are a number of ways of drawing a sketch, but it's principally important to remember that the sketch lines must be locked and aligned to the reference planes so that they create a relationship and will adjust with the reference planes when the parameters are changed. So firstly I could draw some lines around the outside like so. Note that I have the chain option selected so that it will continue to draw lines. I can then use the align tool in the modify tab. I will select the reference plane first because that's what I want to align the sketch line to and then I will select the sketch line. Note that I have a little padlock that appears and I must make sure that I select that padlock. I can do the same for the rest of these sketch lines. And what I can do is I can go to my family types and I can actually flex the geometry or the parameters whilst inside the sketch mode and I can see how the sketch lines are working. I'm going to select these lines and delete them. Another alternative is to draw a rectangle. And if I draw a rectangle over the top of the reference planes, note how they are snapping to and highlighting the reference planes. I can click once to begin the rectangle, click again to end the rectangle, and I can now select each of these four padlocks to lock the sketch line to the reference planes. So that is a second way of creating the rectangle geometry or sketch lines. The last way I will demonstrate is I can use the pick lines tool. So I can select pick lines. I can automatically select the pick lines to lock. 
So I can select each reference plane. Notice how it creates a line at the full length of the reference plane, but it does automatically lock. I can go around and do this for each line. And then I can use the trim tool to trim the sketch together. Note that a sketch must be a closed loop. So I cannot have any extended lines out here because Revit will not know how to create this solid piece of geometry. If I try to finish the edit mode, I get a warning that says lines cannot intersect. The highlighted lines currently intersect and it's highlighting the orange lines here. I can either choose to quit sketching, which will exit the sketch mode, losing all the work I have done, or I can click continue and go and fix the sketch. To test whether the sketch is closed, I can always hover over one line and then press the tab tool. And this will often show me whether I have connecting lines. Once I'm happy with my sketch, I can then click the finish edit mode and I have a solid piece of geometry, which I can now see in plan. If I go to my default 3D view, I can now see this geometry in the view here. I'm going to go to my elevation and I can see that my piece of geometry has been created, but has been associated to the reference plane at the bottom. However, I want it to be associated and locked to these two reference planes here. There are a number of ways I can do this. The first way I can simply select the geometry and note how there are drag arrows that appear. And I can use these to drag the geometry up until it hovers over and highlights the reference plane. I can unclick my mouse button and then tick the padlock. I can do the same to the bottom, like so. I'll just undo those just to show an alternative method. Because I want the geometry to be hosted to one of these reference planes, I can select the geometry. Notice how the current work plane, so the work plane or plane that the geometry is hosted to, is currently the reference level. That is because I created it in the floor plan for reference level. However, I can click on Edit Work Plane, and then it gives me a number of options. I can specify a new work plane, so I could click on the drop down. I could pick a plane, so I could select OK, and I'll pick the underside of this reference plane here, and then I can, instead of using the drag arrow, I can use the Align tool to select the top reference plane, select the geometry, and then lock like so. I can now go back into my 3D view, and I can see the geometry like so. I'm just going to change the scale of this 3D view. Alternatively, I could turn on the Thin Lines tool, so I cannot see the thickness of the geometry. It's up to you which method you choose. I'll likely swap between each as I go through, depending on the appropriateness of the view for the task. So I can now see, by rotating around, that I have my tabletop geometry. Again, it's very important to flex the family to make sure it is behaving appropriately. So I could change the depth, click apply, 
I can see that's working. The height, the tabletop thickness, and the width. Perfect, that's all looking good, so I'm happy with that piece of geometry. I now want to go and create some legs for this dining table. So I'll go back to my floor plan and the legs are going to be inset from the edge. So I need to create some reference planes to allow me to position the legs of this dining table. So I've created the reference planes. I can now draw dimensions because I want to be able to set the offset of the legs from the edge of the table. Remember again how the hierarchy works. This center front back reference plane is locked. So the width will move first and then this reference plane will always remain in the same relation to the back reference plane. I can select all these parameters at the same time, holding down control on the keyboard and selecting the parameters. And I can go and create a new parameter called leg offset. Select OK. And it is now standardized and aligned all the reference planes. I'll change this parameter to 100. I can now go and create an extrusion for the legs. I can set the work plane before I start modeling. So I can click set and it's currently at reference level, but I could choose any of the other reference planes. But I'm happy with reference level because the legs will go down to the floor. I'm going to create some simple circular legs. So I'll select the circle tool and I'll simply draw a circle like so. Note that a radial dimension or temporary dimension appears in the circle. I can click on the little dimension tool to make it a permanent dimension. And by clicking on this dimension, I can now assign a parameter. And I could call this leg radius. Select OK. Additionally, if I select the circle, I can select the center mark visible which will allow me to then use the align tool to align and lock this circle to the appropriate reference planes. Once I've done one, I can then repeat across all of the legs. Note that I can have multiple sketches inside the same extrusion. However, they cannot be overlapping and must be separate. I can select the dimensions, select the drop down to select the existing leg radius parameter. Select the three circles. And then use the align and lock tool to lock all of them. It is sometimes a tedious process, but it's worth it to know that you've locked every single piece of geometry or sketch line to the appropriate reference plane. I can now change the leg radius to say 25. Let's go 40. And I can click finish edit mode. I can go into my 
3D view, I can see that my legs are not extending up to the correct height. So I can go into my front elevation, select the legs and drag them up until they hover over and highlight the underside of the table top reference plane and then click lock. Again, it's worth going into 3D and then flexing the family to make sure that the legs adjust as expected. So that's it. That's how to create a very basic table family by going through creating the reference planes, creating parameters from dimensions, and then creating some basic geometry. I now want to be able to place this family inside a project, and we'll look at that in the next video.